things a lot more comforting knowing you got people out there that are with you and all the way. So I appreciate that. Um, today we're going to be in Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. I'll let you turn there real quick. And then we're going to be talking about why faith is required in your daily walk with God. Because um, you see, without faith, um, you really you don't have a reason to even be a Christian, to be honest. Um, according to the online dictionary, faith is confidence or trust in a person or thing. It also states that faith is not based on proof. But that's not true for us as Christians. Because we have proof through Christ and his death on the cross. So we're going to be in Hebrews 11, 1 through 6. Right there. Right there. All right. It says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith we understand God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith Abel, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. God commending him by accepting his gifts, and through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith Enoch was taken up so that he, he should not see death, and he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him, for whoever, or whoever would draw near to, to God must believe that he exists and that he reveals rewards, and he rewards those who seek him. You see, as it says in verse 1, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, and the conviction of things not seen. Um, as you continue reading on through verse 11, God gives us many examples of people who had faith. Um, people like Abraham and people like Moses and the people of Israel. And all these people, they all had one thing in common. One thing. They all acted on what God told them to do. By faith, Abraham, he offered up Isaac, saying, Lord, I want I want." My only son that I've waited so long for, I want him to be yours. I don't want to hinder anything from you, Lord. I want it all to be all to be yours. Moses, when he was growing up, he refused to be known as the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. Instead, he chose to grow up among the people of God, mistreated among his along his entire, entire life. The people of Israel, they crossed the Red Sea on dry land. while the people of Egypt were washed away by the water because they had true faith, the people of Israel. You see, true faith requires action on your part and mine. When you trust God with your life, if you're not moved to immediately change the way you act according to the will of God, you don't have true faith. Because faith requires action, like I said. If you just sit back and you continue down the depths of despair, down just living the way you lived before you were a Christian, you don't have true faith. When you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you should feel compelled to change the way you were before. Because you're new, you've been washed away. You're as white as snow now. You should act as a way that reflects God. In James 2, 22 to 26, it says that you see faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works, and not by faith alone. And the scripture was fulfilled, that says. Abraham believed God, and it, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works, and not by faith alone. And in the same way was not also Rahab, the prostitute justified by works, when she received the messengers, and sent them out by another way. For as a body apart from the spirit is dead, so so also faith apart from works is dead. James laid it out there, right there at the end of that scripture. He said that faith apart from works is dead. But true faith requires action. And when you have true faith, you have saving faith. It's faith that, that will save you from your sin and allow you to one day 
walk at the right hand of God. But that's only if you have true faith, which requires action. Ephesians 2, 1 through 10 says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sin in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of power of the air of the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and we were, by nature, children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us live together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places of Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not a result of work, so that no one may boast. For we are his work, workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. When you have true faith, you have saving faith. And true faith requires action. For by grace, every, every single one of us in here has been saved. It just said that in Ephesians. Like Paul told us, but only if you have true faith. Now, while true faith is acting on what God has done in your life and having saving faith, it says in verse 6, and without faith it is impossible to please him, him being God. And that's, the, that's my next point, is that faith is also required to please God. You must put your faith and trust in God to please Him. Works alone does not make you pleasing to God. While works, like I said, comes with faith, it does. But just works alone does not save you. God wants to have a relationship with you that is real and personal. We've been going through growth groups, and I've been doing experiencing God with Daryl and Billy Joe, and we have these seven realities of God that basically describes how God wants to, wants to be in a relationship with us. And the first reality is God wants to have a relationship with you that is real and personal. Turn your Bibles with me to Romans 8, 5 through 11. <clears throat> Romans 8, 5 through 11, it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on things of the Spirit. For to set the mind on flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God, for it does not submit to God's law, indeed it cannot. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give you life to your moral bodies through a spirit who dwells in you. You see, having faith means that you dwell in the spirit. You deny yourself and you live according to God's word. Because when you live in the flesh, you, can't, you, you cannot please God. How many people in here have ever filled a prescription at Walgreens or any other kind of pharmacy just by that a doctor prescribed to you? I show again. Most people. How many people, when you went home, you got that medicine, and you took it home, and you, you looked at it, and you said, you know, I don't really need this. I know it's best for me. I don't need to take this. I'll just get better on my own. I'll be fine. How many people did that? <laughs> now, how many people went home, looked at that bottle, said, okay, one pill every four hours. This will take my stomach bug or my cold or whatever away. 
How many people did what the bottle told them to do? Most people. And you did what the doctor told you to do. You see, God is our doctor. He knows what's best for us. Even when we don't think his way is best, even though we think our way is best, it's not. You see, when you deny God, it's like denying a doctor. And you're, when you deny God, you're, you're denying his spirit, and, that, and that's wrong. When you have true faith, you're to deny yourself, and you're to say, God, I'm giving you all the glory. I'm allowing you to work in my life, and I'm going to do what you want me to do according to the word of God. According to your word, that's how I'm going to live. You're to deny yourself and giving your life to you're to give your life completely over to God. You see, God has made us a promise through His Son, and the promise is that we will all one day have the chance to accept His Son. And whether or not you do that, that's up to you, and that's between you and God. And that's what it takes to please God. That's what rewards you salvation. It's trusting in his son, Jesus Christ. And because you trust in the Lord and you have true faith, you're to obey his word. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is the truth. You see, the word of God is our way to act. It's our God. A lot of people, they they claim to be Christians, and they say, yeah, I, I go to church every Sunday. I, you know, come back on Sunday nights for growth groups and come back on Wednesday for prayer meeting, and, you know, I sing in the choir, and, you know, I do this and I do that, but outside of church, they're just thinking that their way is better, and they don't do what God commanded them to do. In his word. A good example of that is tithing. Whether or not you tithe. You guys know the number one reason people don't tithe? They don't want to. They don't trust God. That's true. That's true. They don't they don't believe that God could bless ninety percent of their money rather than the hundred percent they originally received. They believe it's their money. They earned it. It's all mine. i got to keep on to this because this is what I need to get through life. When in reality, God would bless that 90% a thousand times more than that 100% would be. Because that's, right. that's what God commanded us to do in his word. Just 10%. Another example, sharing the word of God. Your next door neighbor, you know, you know they're not Christians. You know they don't go to church. They probably never even read one verse in the Bible. But instead of sharing your word, the word of God with them, you say, can't, can't do it, Lord. Can't do it. I can't step out of this little box right here. You know, i got to be with my, my youth group, and no, I can't, can't do that. Can't step out of my comfort zone. God, com <clears throat> Excuse me. God commands us to make disciples of 